Okay, so this is going to be a little bit different. Normally, I'm um, behind the camera and I bother him. Um, make sure you guys think. So I'm, I'm sure I'll show you some stuff or whatever. But I wanted to get um, like a little bit of an interview going with, with Kevin here and ask him some questions, things that you guys want to know. And he doesn't know what the questions are. We haven't talked about this at all because some of the stuff he might not want to talk about, but I really don't care. I'm going to ask him anyways. So uh, here's Kevin. And uh, the first thing, like, this is a really big thing, and, and I'm really interested in it, and I want to know and I want to understand a little better about is hidden genes. Um, the hidden gene stuff, it was kind of like you stumble on it, and I know other people have stumbled on. It would be just like, you know, yellow bellies bred right together make an ivory. That's a stumbled on thing. Uh, specter in yellow belly, that's, a, you know, another kind of stumbled on thing. So I had my line of Womas, I had the two lines of Womas, and... I kept back just from this one female, I kept back the more interesting looking Walmas and I let some of the other ones go, which now are the common $350 Walmas you see out there. And so the interesting ones that I kept, I just thought they were really interesting. I'm like, ah, oh, that's too nice, I don't want to sell that. Well, ultimately when I bred that, what I did was I got a hold of a male lesser from Africa, from Noah, basically. That was a direct descendant of a daddy platy to a queen Belinda. So everybody understands that. You got the, an expensive lesser that supposedly had some kind of, he, as Noah says, it had the, 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 the gene, the magic okay. gene. So, you know, the daddy platy thing, because Ralph has got all the daddy platy stuff and, and whatnot. So I was just like, that seemed like a good thing. I didn't have any lessers or anything like that, so I got that. Not knowing any more than that, I was like, okay, I got a good lesser, and then maybe someday I'll be able to make daddy platies and whatnot. So I got that, and I just basically happened to breed a hidden gene Woma. Actually, you my, didn't know at the time. I just thought it was a good-looking Woma. Yes, I just, it was my original mother, okay. the one that I got in from Africa and raised, and I bred her to this lesser. And uh, I hatched out a striped you know, cross, which is that, you know, the, what we call now the soul sucker or whatnot. And evidently, in theory, I would say, just like the daddy platy, whatever makes a daddy platy, we tapped into whatever makes a daddy platy because you get the striping and the, the woma seems to line up on the same allele and it creates this... Are they the same thing? Is a play daddy and a soul sucker or anything no, like that? No, no. Anything like that, they're not the same thing. No, but it, 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 but it seems like it's satisfying the same thing, that maybe the two things together would make a daddy platy. Well, we have this thing that is waiting for the daddy platy thing to, to, mate, to make the daddy platy. Instead, we go hidden gene warm up, which brings in a bunch of stuff, it seems, and it, it, it activates something. We get this striped, okay. odd-looking animal. And just so people understand something... The, the super Woma, if I take a hidden gene Woma and I breed it to a normal, those resulting babies, I could take one of those babies and breed it back to that visible hidden gene Woma and make the, the pearls, make the ding-dong pearls, okay? So it, it seems like it's doing that same kind of daddy platy type thing. And uh, we've made quite a few pearls over time. Just you know, we breed something. Oh, it's cool. We raise it up. We don't ever think about it. Then we bring it back to one. Boom! There's that fatal pearl thing going on. But we actually have now finally hatched the non-fatal pearl. Is it only hidden gene woman and hidden gene woman that makes the pearl, or any kind of woman? Uh, so what's so what? In a, in well, what's what, what what has gotten interesting now is hidden gene woman. I have now taken a hidden gene woman and bred it to um, something like a champagne, and I made pearl things. There's a couple other times I've taken snakes that have no relation to, to Woma and I bred them to Hidden Gene Woma and I still made that one fatal one thing. thing so the Hidden Gene Woma allele or whatever, that complex, whatever, it seems like there's, it, it can line up with variable different things and I don't, I don't really understand it and I actually kind of like not understanding it because I think there's still more stuff we can do with it. Um, I'm really kind of trying to get going on the Hidden Gene Woma stuff. Now there's so many different things I haven't bred it to. So now we start intermingling it with other genes that maybe carry their own Hidden Gene thing. You know, it could be, it could be a Spectre, it could be a White Lace. So you're looking, for that, next, you're looking for that next stumble upon Absolutely. combination and, and um, activate something again. Okay. And, I, and, it's, and it's there. You take a Soul Sucker. Yeah. And you would have breed it to a normal. 
Yeah. I, if you do that, I'll kill you because why would you do that? But uh, but if you were to do that, what do you get? Okay, that, that's a good thing. Let's say if we compare like a Super Stripe to a Soul Sucker. So a Super Stripe is Yellow Belly Spectre, Soul Sucker is Hidden Gene Woma to Lesser Hidden Gene. Um, when I breed a Super Stripe to normal, they never cross over. So I make Yellow Bellies and I make Spectres. They don't. You don't. They don't. You recreate cannot. Themselves. You cannot recreate that. So it's not. A, okay. You know. It's not. Yeah, it just doesn't work. So if I breed a soul sucker to a normal, in theory, and I have done it, I can make soul suckers. It it's wherever it they seven. cross. Wherever the two hit, they cross, boom. We make soul suckers. But what I don't get is all lessers, all hidden gene womas. I can breed a soul sucker to a normal and never hatch a soul sucker and hatch a hidden gene woma in normals. So now let me ask you this. Trade. When you do that, when you breed a soul sucker to a normal, all the lessers that come out of that, Hidden gene Absolute, lessers? Absolutely guaranteed. We've, and all the walnuts that come out of that? Yes, absolutely. So they're guaranteed. So yes. It's attached to that it, gene. Yeah. To that morph, regardless. Yeah, we're getting some weird stuff too. Like, the um, it's very hard for me right now to make a hidden gene woma without the granite that I mixed in early. It, right. it attaches itself to it. It seems like I'm doing that with my lemon pastels too. The granite seems to affix itself to the lemon pastel. And um, I... I think there's just some of these genes, I don't know how it's working, but they just seem to grab something and they, they go with it. I, I think there's other genes, you know, other mutations that have the same kind of uh, symbiotic relationship. Okay, very cool. Enchies. I know you love Enchies a lot, and a lot of people love Enchies right now. There's a lot of new stuff that's happened with them, and everybody's into them and not. Why all of a sudden? I know I'm not here, because I came here years ago, and, and I was shown an Enchie, and I said, yeah, whatever, show me the fancy stuff, and I kind of brushed it off. And so you've been into it for a long time, but why all of a sudden, like, why is Enchi so popular now? Um, well, okay, there's a couple things. Enchi is a pattern mutation and it's a color mutation, and the color mutation is, you know, having that straw yellowy with, where you get those almost hypoe scales, it, it seems to help reduce, I'm very fixated on reduction of pattern and uh, yellows and non-earth tones, Brian. Okay. And, uh... The Enchi just adds like a weird color. And then, of course, the Super Enchi is even more extreme. And Super Enchis are so remarkable. When they're little, they look really nice. But as they grow, they, they these animals really start changing a lot. And they get just this washout thing. And they get these bright hypoe scales. So, um, unknowingly, because, you know, I, t I had a little hiatus with, with ball python breeding and stuff like that. So, uh, I'm kind of getting my, you know, getting... So my Enchi stuff just recently represented into what I'm doing, and then I started coming up with a bunch of Enchi combinations, and I really was asleep under the rock, and you kind of actually helped pull me out because uh, I just I just kind of had enough with some of the politics and whatnot. Um, so as we're making these cool different things, the Enchi really started showing what what it could do. Like when I made the Enchi Ferno, uh, that well, snake was just you know it was so fantastic. Just looking at that snake, this thin little banding and. All and the colors so extreme, um, and now we've made so many different Enchi combos, showing that people because people I think are really impressed when they start seeing um, limited patterns. So if we can get like a, a base start color putting dots on it or lines or very very limited limited patterns, that kind of it, it's very appealing to us because we're very much dictated about uh, contrast on these animals. So um, the Enchi does a lot of that, and now. My theory is, if you look at the pied thing, the whole pied thing, um, I think the pied, other than the fact that pieds are pretty remarkable as they are, when we start comboing pieds, they don't necessarily combo so well, and that's kind of like hip so pieds. You get almost all I, 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 a little head. Yeah. Head you, head so head. if I breed a pie to a spider and I breed that spider head pie back to a pie, I make this 95% white snake with this spider pattern head. And Which looks, is really cool, the first Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And it's nice to have a snake or two of that in your collection, right. but I'm, you know, Lucism, you know, years ago was our pinnacle, and now that we've done it, I actually don't want to really create leucistics. I want to create the weird patterns, the weird colors, anything, you know, crazy. I think we're all fascinated by not necessarily a blank canvas, but a canvas that's doing some weird stuff. So when we start doing the pie combos, we're almost right to the point of what the leucistic genes are doing in the ivory. So um, it seems the Enchi... Even though it's a pattern and color mutation, it seems like any pattern and color mutation, when it meets up with a pie, 
you instantly get this 95% white snake. But the Enchi pattern color mutation gene, which it absolutely is, all of a sudden, you start getting these animals that are actually low pied, and now you start, you represent this weird patterning on the snake. Once the Enchi and the pied are both being expressed there, you get this really fantastic looking animal, and because Enchis have so much orange in them, and then we know pieds have orange, it starts offering all sorts of different, you know, uh, aspects or, you know, potential, especially with pied being, having the partial striping and that, you know, the stripe with the orange and all that kind of stuff, and the Enchi's orange, and then you start throwing a pastel on top of that. So I think the Enchi's going to be very, very good when we're breeding it into, you know, pieds. Now, mind you, there's only been a handful of Enchi pied pieds made at all, but so far they're all following that, that same mind. The, the Enchi brings the pattern back into the pie. So yeah, it allows, it allows, pie, allows, yeah. If you want to make a pie with that, those color, that pattern, and you want it to actually stay with the pattern, not just turn to a white, then you essentially need some sort of entry in there to bring it back. It allows it to express itself. Okay. When I start adding just the pie gene as a het, so if I start taking you know, five mutations and there's a het pie there, the het pie is almost acting like almost visual. It's it's becoming a visual. Like I am that. I am now getting snakes that are head pied and they're like, what is going on with this? It's really it's like, oh that's a head pie. Not because I'm looking at the belly, because I'm noticing a bunch of other stuff. Because that pied, even though it's simple recessive, it's trying to express itself and that, that head pied has now become more powerful because of all this other stuff is hogging up everything and now that head pied is starting to have Power, whereas if I just did, you know, one gene and a het pie, and I might altogether miss it, right. it's starting to show. And, and uh, you know, I know I'm rambling on this, but I'm really seeing it. That's you know, right. for sure. I don't mind the rambling. Another thing that I like to talk about a lot when I come over here and take pictures of you guys seen the videos before. You know, I'm really, really into the core glows. Big, big fan of them. Always have been those black dots and the banana core glow glow and that general uh, thing of the, the snakes there. But what do you see in the future for those? What is your vision for the core glow. I know you have a ton, you know, you've made these things, you whatever, and it's great. Honestly, and I've said this before, you know, you show me combos, you show me all these things that are here that are fantastic and great and they cost a bazillion dollars and whatever it is. I'm more impressed still today with a regular single gene core glow Absolutely. than any combo it, form it, that you've shown me yet. Hands down, it's the most powerful base morph that there is. Um, now, what do you see in the future for that? What do you have planned for that? I have such it? awesome stuff it? planned. I, I am... Uh, Give me the next two years. Coral glow. Um, uh, pied coral glows, pied coral glow combinations, um, Super Phantom Coral Glow. Now, what would you, how, how disappointing would you be if you make a Coral Glow pie and the damn thing is 95% white? So, then what we do is we add Enchi. Okay, there we so go. So, I'm we'll using my Enchi as my, as my tool. Okay. And, uh, yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> you, you have to use that as a fulcrum and a lever. Um, Soul Sucker Coral Glow. I wish. I think you tried to do that this year. Right? I wish this really last year. To, we came to make that video and then it didn't work out so good. So that's why you guys didn't see it's that. It's all right. Video. It's all right. I, it, this this upcoming year, I I, there's, I don't see how I'm not going to make it. I, I'm very excited about that. I'm very very excited to see what a super phantom coral glow is going to be. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of things. I, um, what I am actually, I might even have eggs right now cooking for that, which would be uh, Enchi Coral Glow, and um, near, hopefully, uh, Pastel Enchi Coral Glow Ovulation, which I just have, like, one snake I'm just randomly breeding right now, and they're very close to us where we're sitting. And uh, she's getting ready to ovulate, but I would love to see the Enchi...